Mega Man was like the cockroach of video games back in the late 80s through the mid 90s. There were shitloads of them, and they just wouldn't die. And I mean that as a testament to the series' staying power. In late 1993, you had the classic series which had just finished up its NES run with Mega Man 6, the newly launched X series which had its first release earlier in the year as well, plus the three Game Boy entries. But the Game Boy needs to catch up to the NES series, so why not package together Mega Man 4? It's very similar to the previous three entries where you battle a group of four Robot Masters from an NES Mega Man roster, and then move on to four more from the following game, plus Wily stages at the end. The gameplay is essentially the same as previous Mega Man games on the Game Boy as well, but the presentation has been beefed up. The plot isn't anything fancy or original, Dr. Wily sends eight Robot Masters into the city to cause destruction in an effort to take over the world, and it's up to Mega Man to take care of business. But the cutscenes are really impressive for the Game Boy, and there ends up being more depth to them than you might expect. In addition to the eight Robot Masters from the NES's Mega Man 4 and 5, there's also a new character named Blade, who is Dr. Wily's robotic right-hand man, essentially playing the same exact role as Punk from Mega Man 3. But by the time the game comes to an end, he's not just a cookie cutter bad guy robot that shows up, dies, and that's it. There's at least a little bit of character development. His mysterious nature reminds me of Proto Man, only not as cool, but at least Belade adds a halfway decent character to Mega Man lore. There are some new features, like Beat making his debut in the Game Boy series. You have to collect hidden letter parts in each of the first four stages to spell out Beat in order to acquire him which helps in attacking enemies all over the screen. In the second batch of Robot Master stages, you have to collect letters that spell out Wily, and while you don't need B to finish the game, you do need these Wily parts, because you won't be able to access the gate to the Wily stages without them. This is something unique to the Game Boy series. Another thing that was unique for the series at the time, or at least the classic Mega Man series, is the item shop, or Dr. Light's lab in this case. You collect these items called P-Chips throughout the game that are either in designated places or dropped by enemies, that essentially serve as currency, as Dr. Light needs these chips to develop items that you'll get in the lab, like E-Tanks, Extra Lives, etc. Speaking of tanks, another thing they added specifically for this game are the small E-Tanks, these little squares that say E. If you get four of these, you'll get one E-Tank. A couple other little intangibles I'd like to mention is the soundtrack, which much like Mega Man 3, recycles stripped down versions of the songs from the NES game, although there are some pretty good originals for the Wily stages. And speaking of Wily stages, another thing I'd like to mention is the fact that the Wily stages seamlessly segue into each other, kind of like how Sonic 3 on Genesis presented their stages. It was a nice touch. After Mega Man 3 brought the Game Boy series back to form, Mega Man 4 keeps things going strong. It's not necessary for casual fans, but if you're selective and only want one Mega Man entry for the Game Boy Collection, it's hard to argue with picking up Mega Man 4. So the game starts off with a cutscene of Dr. Wily dispersing his four most recent robotic cronies, Ring Man, Toad Man, Bright Man, and Pharaoh Man, into the city to wreak havoc and Dr. Light sends Mega Man out to battle. The four Robot Masters follow the same weakness loop that they do in the NES version, so you can pick whichever one you fancy, but I suggest starting with Toad Man because he's the easiest to thwart out with the Mega Buster by a mile. You won't see an enemy until about the ninth screen, this bubble thing that hangs down, and the robotic rats that hop around. Blast them with charged shots, and be sure to hang a left after slipping down this ladder so you don't hit the spikes and grab the P-chip up here. You'll be back outside and pull a Bob Seeger as you're running against the wind as the rain comes down. Be sure to get as close to the edge as possible before jumping over the pits. You'll then encounter the giant snail mini boss. Avoid the bombs he launches overhead, and when he opens his eyes, blast him there. It's his only weakness. So charge up while they're closed, because he's immune to damage with his eyes closed. But watch out for when he lunges out his eyes before pulling them back with some invisible retractable cable or some shit. Grab the B part up here in the corner, and when you get in the water, don't worry too much about these fish. Unlike in the NES version, for some reason they don't jump up through the platforms like ghosts. 
to let them try and just pass on by. Grab the P-chip here and hug the wall on your drop down here so you can slip into the nook for an extra life. After finishing off another snail, the ground explodes and you'll drop down right in front of the gate to Toad Man. His attack pattern is the same as the NES. He'll jump around and do a rain dance to command the deadly acid rain that he's immune to and there's no way to dodge it. But you can't prevent it from even happening, because all you have to do is shoot him, and he repositions himself every time before trying again. If you get up close, he'll make a short jump right around you, and then it's just a matter of turning and firing. And like the first Don Flamenco fight in Mike Tyson's Punch Out, all you have to do is keep alternating back and forth until he's out, and you'll get the rain flush, which will summon a rainstorm just like Toad Man, which can damage or sometimes even clear out enemies entirely off the screen. You'll also get the Rush Coil Adapter. Now whenever you complete a stage, you can access Dr. Light's lab, or Dr. Wright as he's apparently called here. You can also access it by pressing select from the select screen. I'm not going to tell you what to get at specific points of the game, because who knows really how many P-chips you've gotten. So I'll leave most of it to your discretion, but here's a little rundown of the items. There's the extra life for 50 chips, the energizer balancer which will refill your lowest weapon at a given time for 150 chips. I recommend getting this one as soon as you can. The S tank is a supercharge which will refill all your weapons and health for 120 chips. An E tank is a traditional tank that fills your energy for 60 chips. I'd only get these if you've got a lot of chips and you've already bought the balancer. The small E tank gets you a quarter of the way to a full E tank. At 20 chips it's not worth it. Just save up 60 for a damn E tank. Or find some in the wild. The W tank fills up all your weapons for 30 chips and lastly the weapon recharger will recharge all your weapons right now for 80 chips. And why in the hell would you get this over the W tank when it's the same thing only more than double the price? Well in this game your weapon energy carries over from stage to stage the way it usually does in Wily stages. So you can recharge between stages and still carry a W tank. Even still this is a waste of chips as far as I'm concerned. The energy balancer should get you refilled again soon enough in most situations. Anyway, next up is Brightman. Use your newly acquired Rush Coil to get the P-Chip up here, and don't bother shooting these light bulb guys, as they'll turn the place dark until you blast these little guys that expel fireworks, although you shouldn't have to worry about falling into a pit if you do shoot them. Just watch out for the projectiles it drops that scatters off to the side. Use the coil to get the small E-Tank up here, just quickly get away and kill the ballerina. You'll hit the switch that'll kill the lights as you jump out onto the platforms that raise as you land on them, but you can see the platform is fine. Just blast the light bulb guys, who cares, you're in the dark anyway. Let the platforms raise a bit to give you some height on your next jump, and turn the lights back on with the switch as you get back on land. You'll come across this other moving platform, one that moves down and forward simultaneously as you stand on it, but raises as you jump, so do quick moves to give yourself some height, let it take you over the spikes to the extra life and P-chip, then get back on it and let it drift underneath and take it the rest of the way. And don't worry about shooting the bulb guy just because you're over the pit, there's a firework guy right after, and it's land ho. You'll get another lineup of moving platforms in the dark with the light bulb guys, and then there's the swinging platforms that go back and forth. Much like before, you can still see the platforms, so don't worry about the darkness and the light bulb guys. Just take them out and forge ahead to the next platform, stop to grab the E part, and then ride the slopey platform to the gate to break. So take some slow and high jumps, fire a few bullets straight and diagonally, and sometimes use his flash stopper to freeze you prior to utilizing one of these attacks. Spam attack him with the rain flush. You don't have to aim with this weapon, so while you're waiting to fire again, just worry about positioning. You can't help but get frozen, so try to get some distance and jump into the air a bit right after he lands, because that'll be when he uses the flash stopper. And he'll miss with his bullets so long as you're far enough away from him. Sometimes he'll jump when you're frozen, in which case there's nothing you can do but take a hit, but as long as you're smashing the rain flush, you'll be fine. You'll get the flash stopper, which freezes enemies temporarily and lets you fire your regular arm cannon shots during the interim. Next, select Feral Man. There'll be all kinds of quicksand off the bat. Continuously jump so you don't drown, and shoot the scorpions that rise and chase you. Use Rush Coil to get up here for a P-chip and energy capsule, 
and blast the mummies while avoiding their heads that they launch at you before going back behind the wall and re-emerging. Slide back into the squeeze for a small E-tank, P-chip, and energy capsule, then fight through the mummies down this way for an E-tank. When you land on these small blocks, they'll slowly shift down one spot at a time. Once they're level with the gap, slide through, and after fighting through another stretch of quicksand, use the coil to get this energy capsule if you need it. You've got a long line of dropping blocks here, and the A part is way up here where you'll need to throw the coil down as you jump across and quickly grab it. It needs to be done like a split. Let these blocks drop a bit to give you headroom on your jumps across, and there's an extra life sitting in this nook right after but if you're not confident in your ability to jump back out of it, it's not worth bothering for. Although as long as you get to it, you've really got nothing to lose. Use the coil to get this P-chip, and the gate the Pharaoh Man is right after. He'll do quick jumping attacks with his short range Pharaoh Sword, or whatever this melee weapon is, and then he'll stop momentarily to unleash his Pharaoh Shot. He can be a real pain to keep up with without taking hits, but so long as you have the Flash Stopper, there's no need to worry. It won't take a lot of his energy out, but you'll be able to keep him from moving as you pump his guts full of lead. Just try to time it so he's on the ground so you don't have to jump up into the air to hit him. You'll get a lot more shots in. After finishing him off, you'll get the Pharaoh shot, which fires a shot in six directions, plus has the charge ability for a larger attack that does more damage. Just be sure not to miss because it does use up more weapon energy. Last member of this batch is Ringman. Shoot down the guns as you climb the ladder, and when you step on this platform, it will slide across with a gap forming in the middle of it. Wait for the opening and then jump to get across. These striped ones will always flow right to left, and the solid ones will move left to right. Quickly move to the left after landing on the moving platform here so you don't drop into the spikes. Grab the P-chip here and slide to get the extra light. But slide back quickly so you don't go off the edge. Use the rain flush to wipe out this rolling helmet fuck so you can climb up and grab the T-part. Wipe out another one up ahead and use the coil to get the P-chip. Use Flash Stopper on this ring robot when he fires the rings outward, giving you easier access to his eyes, which is the target. And use the coil to get the energy up here if you need it. Watch your footing on these moving platforms, make sure you're on a spot where the platform doesn't move, and wipe out the enemies in front of you before you move on. Grab this P-switch, and then one more right before the gate to Ringman. Just watch out for the buzzsaw. Ringman's pattern is one-dimensional, but not easy. We'll chuck a ring boomerang straight ahead, then jump and toss a ring diagonally before charging. It sounds easy enough, but the fact that the rings come back to him because, well, it's a boomerang, just makes them that much harder to avoid while also keeping an eye on Ringman himself. But if you use the Pharaoh shot, you should be fine. Even if you take a few hits, since you can control the shot in multiple angles. After finishing him off, you'll get the ring boomerang, which has okay range, but since it's a boomerang, it'll come back to you and you get a second hit on anything it won't take out in one shot, even if you jump. Also, as long as you get all four beat parts, you'll get beat, who will attack anything on the screen when you have him equipped. So now you'll get a cutscene of Mega Man approaching Dr. Wily's castle, exchanging some gunfire before teleporting into it, and then you're immediately faced off with a boss battle against this satellite dish looking thing. It'll spit this wheel out into the air that'll hover over you and drop. So get out of the way as it comes down, and when the shield on the wheel opens up, hit it with a charged up buster shot. It'll send these slow moving flames that spin around in an oval, slide under it when the flame is at the top, or jump when it's low, one or the other. Sometimes it'll send two flames, which will very likely hit you. There's not much room to work with here. After finishing it off, you're not done yet. You have to go through this hallway that's blocked off with explosives. Shoot them all from a distance, and you'll enter another gate where Wily is waiting. Mega Man chases him down, and Blade shows up trying to sneak in a shot. You'll end up at another gate where you'll face off with Blade. He'll jump around and attack with small missiles that go straight ahead and at a diagonal. He'll be vulnerable when he attacks, because he just stands there. Slide under him when he jumps, and fire at him with the Pharaoh shot or a charged up Mega Buster, and when he's down to one hit point, he'll take off and you'll exit the stage. 
Now it's on to the next batch of Robot Masters. Like the first four, they have their own weakness loop, but they also have secondary weaknesses with the weapons you've collected already. Even still, I like to pick Stone Man first here, who I don't even like to use his weakness weapon against, but to each his own. I'll let you know the alternate options for each of these guys. Blast this sliding landmine from a distance before climbing up, take out the hard hat and its babies that spring out from his corpse, and then you'll deal with this weird rotating platform that'll shift positions when you jump on it. There'll be more of these later on. Drop into this nook for some pea chips and watch the blocks that look like this. They'll drop down underneath you after a very brief period of standing on them. But they go down one level at a time, so when you get here, let it drop to the gap where you can slide through. You'll then come across the hippo mini boss where you have to shoot the blocks underneath him to bring him low enough to shoot. Just watch out for his missile attacks. And the blocks eventually regenerate so you have to do a lot of blasting. Or just charge up a couple faro shots and let him have it. Let this block drop so you have easy access in and out of this nook for the energy capsule if you need it. You'll then reach a fork in the road. The top ladder is optional you'll have to use this guy as a platform to slide under to get to the ladder, which will lead to an E-Tank after a few obstacles. Then go back and take the lower ladder. When you drop down here, hug the right side and take the jet across to get the E-Tank in this hidey hole, and then slide back through this little hidden spot and hug the right side as you drop down here so you don't fall into the pit. Let the blocks fall so you can get down here for an extra life, but only let them fall low enough to squeeze through so you can get back out and go back to the regular route. Drop into this nook for the L part, and the gate to Stone Man is right after. He'll basically jump around like a madman, or he'll take a long leap while firing off his power stone, which is a trio of stones that rotate in a spiral. When he comes down from a great height, he'll fall apart, but will be immune to your attacks until he puts himself back together. Get some distance so you can weave between his power stone and his jumping, hit him with the charge it up mega buster shots, or the napalm bombs if you decide to go through the napalm man stage first, and after finishing him off, you'll get the power stone, which does the same spiral rotation with three big stones. It's not a very conventional weapon at all, and it's not easy to get the hang of when it comes to aiming, but if you figure it out, it's pretty good for taking care of enemies from a long distance, although you do have the rain flush which takes care of a lot of these problems, so this isn't quite as useful as its NES counterpart. Next up, Charge Man. First you'll deal with some of these hard hat trains, wait for them to fire their spread shot and quickly fire while the hat is still open. Grab the P-chip here, Shoot down the chicken as it sends its babies after you, and grab two pairs of pea chips sitting out in the open. Just be sure to clear the spikes when passing through. Slide down here for a pea chip and energy, and if you want the extra life and small E-tank behind these blocks, you'll have to get the charge kick from this stage and come back later. Charge up your buster to wipe out the mouse, and take the coil up here for an E-tank being guarded by this chicken. Use the coil again to get the Y part up here, and the gate to charge man is soon after. He never gets off the ground, he's too fucking bulky. So he does as his name implies, and he charges, while also sending hot coal from the air which comes down in packs of three. Get in between the fallen coal, jump over him, and unleash the power stone, mainly when you're close to him, in order to better your chances of getting hits in. Charge man is pretty tall, so it won't be easy clearing him. You've got to jump when you're close to him, and he likes to shift back and forth, so slide immediately after jumping to give yourself some distance right after unleashing the power stone. The rain flush is also a good option against him. After wiping him out, you'll get the charge kick, which you'll use your sliding motion to attack with. It's not very practical, but it has its moment every once in a great while. You'll also get the rush jet, which is way more useful. Next up is Crystal Man. At the beginning, take the coil up onto this platform that you can shift with a Mega Buster shot where a small E-Tank sits. There'll be a Crystal Joe guarding a P-Chip. Normally you have to jump over these crystals he fires and quickly wipe him out. But you can sneak up on him from behind here and claim your prize. There'll be another one not long after. Take him out from this platform first, and then right after it's a hidden area behind the next one where you'll find the W part. You'll then come across two ladders. 
If you need some health, take the left one first. It'll lead to an energy capsule. Then go back to get on the main route. Head up this path and let the block fall slowly as you avoid the robot spread shot projectiles from below and slip through when the opening presents itself. Now you're at a fork in the road. You can either take the coil up here or go down the ladder. If you take the coil, let this block fall, but also time your jump between the falling crystals in front of you and when you drop down here, get to the center to get the tiny energy capsules and to avoid the spikes on the far right. Then you'll come across a whole litany of those rotating platforms from earlier that shift over as soon as you land on them, so move quickly, and you'll come to the end of the fork. Now going back, if you took the ladder down, you'll get a line of those fallen crystals. Although some of these shoots don't drop crystals, so wait it out and make sure before jumping. Then you'll find Eddie down here who gives you something. Grab it and take the coil back up to slide for an extra life. Grab the P-chip here, and when you drop down here, sprint and slide quickly because this whole room starts collapsing into itself. When you get to the edge, don't worry. It'll only close up enough for you to jump across the pit, and you'll reach the end of the fork. So pick your poison. I personally like the latter because of the extra life. Head right, stay center when you fall down here to avoid the spikes, and then you'll get some massive moving platforms. Wait for them to move before advancing. Just don't wait too long, they'll close up behind you. You'll get some more of these down the home stretch that drop underneath your feet. Just keep moving and you'll be fine. And Crystal Man is just ahead. He'll hover a bit and fire his crystal eye before coming back down, either in groups of four that bounce around slowly or one at a time that drift off screen. Using the charge kick to slide into him when he lands not only hurts him significantly, but you'll also be immune to his projectiles in this state. The ring boomerang is also a good option against him. Keep sliding until you wipe him out and you'll get the crystal eye, which is a large piece of crystal that will bounce off walls and break off into three more pieces that bring a weaker attack. But it does spread out and is a good consolation in case you miss. But you do have to wait for them to disappear before firing again. Last but not least, Napalm Man. Let these blocks break off underneath you and land on the far left so you can take out the cheetah from a distance. Before going down the ladder, head behind where the cheetah was, wash out the fire with the rain flush, and climb up here where you'll meet Proto Man, who gives you a supercharge that restores all your health and weapon energy, and you'll also get an E-Tank and P-Chip. Drop down this middle ladder on your way back for another P-Chip, slide down here for a small E-Tank, and then climb up to ride this spiked platform thing across and hop onto the upper path to get across. Blast the next spike thing, grab the P-chip, then slip down and slide your way across for another one. Charge up your buster shots for the cheetahs you'll run into along the way, and stop short of these pits cause these missiles will come firing out from underneath when you get close. You don't want to take a hit on your way over and plunk. Take the jet across here, use the rain flush to wipe out the fire, and grab the energy and eye part. Hug the left of the wall on your way down, grab the P-chips and blast the spike wall thing from the ladder, and use the rain flush down here to clear the fire for the extra life on the other side. When you get onto these blocks, slide quickly to avoid them from falling beneath you. They'll start coming down like dominoes, and slide off onto the spike platform at the end. Let the next one blow up all these blocks in your way and the gate to Napalm Man is just ahead. He'll alternate between firing missiles straight ahead and the Napalm Bombs that drop in front of him will explode. Give yourself some distance, slide under him when he jumps, and feed him some Crystal Eye. And the Pharaoh Shot is a good option as well. After taking him out, you'll get the Napalm Bomb, which just like Napalm Man, will drop bombs that explode, which does have an extended radius thanks to the explosion, but the range is short, and it takes a couple seconds for the bombs to go off, so it's very reliant on timing for it to work. So now you're on to the rest of the Dr. Wily stages, so long as you've collected the Wily parts. Enter the gate, kill the ballerinas, and take the coil up here for an E-Tank and weapon capsule. And then again, use the coil to get a P-Chip and weapon capsule up here, and use the charged up buster shot to neutralize the magnets that pull you in, which can be a problem when jumping over this pit. The next gate leads to Belate, who uses the exact same attack pattern as before. This time though, use the power stone, which can get multiple hits on him with each attack if you can get the aiming down. 
When you finish him off, you'll get his weapon, Blade Cracker, which is similar to Pharaoh Shot in terms of it being a projectile you can fire in multiple directions. You can't charge it up like the Pharaoh Shot, but it gives you an explosive aftermath. And you can fire it in seven directions as opposed to six, with straight up vertically being an option as well. Now you're not done with the stage yet. There's a whole bunch of explosives jamming up the passage to the end, much like in the Wily stage from earlier, but the whole building is collapsing behind you, so you have to move fast. Shoot all the bombs in front of you, and use the Pharaoh Shot or Blade Cracker on the ones you need to take down from above. This jump may be tricky due to the ceiling height, either take it down one level or use the rush jet to get across. It's possible to make the jump regularly, but it's risky. When you get to the gate, there's no boss. Mega Man just takes off and you get a cutscene of the Wily castle blowing up, and Wily escaping to his spaceship. He'll return to Light's lab where he gives you the news and encourages you to stock up on supplies, which is a good idea right about now. After exiting the lab, Mega Man uses the modified rush to get to the spaceship, and now it's on to the Wily spaceship stages. The first stretch has a series of missiles that blow up into a spread shot of four pieces of debris diagonally after you shoot it. Blast them and stay directly in front of them to avoid any kind of damage. Then you'll meet up with a hard hat mini boss that fires off this slow moving energy ball. Sometimes it'll go straight ahead and sometimes it goes off the ground. Keep your distance either way to avoid it and blast it with a charge it up mega buster when the opening presents itself and when it gets low enough for you to reach it or just hop on the gun and blow his brains out. Then there are these flying bastards that slam into the ground. Be ready to slide away from their attack and fill them with plasma. The next hard hat gunner will send heat seeking missiles on top of the energy balls. Shoot the missiles down and kill the hard hat when you can get it lined up. Or again, just hop on the gun and blow its brains out. You'll come across an energy capsule and then you'll meet the boss, this massive abomination that alternates between sending off this snake-like arm across and down at you, as well as firing off some of the weapons you've collected, the napalm bomb, ring boomerang, power stone, and blade cracker. Quickly slide to dodge the snake arm, avoid the attacks that seem to come in random intervals, not really any kind of pattern, and shoot the ball thing in the middle that pops out when it's right about to fire off a weapon or the snake arm. It's otherwise invincible. After finally dealing enough shots, you'll destroy this thing and it's on to the next spaceship stage. Right away, you'll meet a long line of these missiles from Napalm Man stage that pop out of the pits and try to blindside you. Lure them first before jumping when they're on their way back. Then use the ring boomerang to grab the E-tank and small E-tank on your way down these sliding blocks. And after dealing with the kitty cat, take the rush jet across these spike pits. Get close to lure this prick into firing at you from its platform, and then blast it after it reveals its shield. And be ready for another pair of these missiles that emerge from the pit before you hit the gate for the first boss. This eyeball bot will duplicate itself into three others and bounce all over the room, with only the real one affecting the health meter. If you shoot out all three of the fakes, then it'll spawn another three all over again. So your best bet is to leave them at two total, keep your eye on the real one, and fire with a charged up buster shot or the pharaoh shot. But I like to save my weapon energy because the robot master rematches are awaiting you later on. After finishing it off, you'll get an energy capsule and you'll continue through the rest of the stage. You've got some more of the missiles that pop out of the pits. Be ready for them, use the ring boomerang to get the extra life in the wall, and use the jet to get across the spikes. Use the jet to get over this platform, use the charge kick to access the weapon capsules, extra life, and e-tank from behind the blocks, and use the pharaoh shot to wipe out the mummy right before the gate to a rematch with the eyeballs. This time though, there are only two of them the whole time, but they maneuver around the perimeter of the room as the stage layout changes from time to time forcing you to adjust. It'll also fire off plasma shots here and there, so try to evade them as you move around the room. Use the napalm bombs on them when they are close, and when you finish the job, you'll get two energy capsules. The stage isn't over yet, remember there's the Robot Master rematches. But first, watch out when traversing these narrow platforms. A missile will pop out of the pit here, and after you take out this Sniper Joe in the aircraft, use the charge kick to enter the secret area where Proto Man gives you a supercharge. 
And right after that is the portal to the Robot Master rematch. The battles are all the same as before, so use the weapons that each robot is weakest against and utilize the same strategy. Here's a legend to showcase which robot is in which portal. After completing all 8 rematches, you'll be sent to an area with some weapon energy capsules and a portal at the end that finishes the stage. You'll get a cutscene of Mega Man encountering the monstrous machine standing before him that represents the final boss, and you take over to do battle with it from there. It'll send a projectile from above, and then takes a swing with its giant fist, similar to Mega Man 3 on the NES, only this time it can come from either side. Dodge the projectile and center yourself so you can react accordingly to the fist, whichever side it's coming from. Slide away from it, and then quickly jump up onto it to get up here and lay the crystal eye into the flashing bulb that the projectiles are coming from. Just watch out for the debris from the ceiling as the fist slams down tearing the place apart. After draining its health, you won't be surprised to learn it has another form, unless this is the first final boss that you've ever faced in a Mega Man game. The head will lower itself to the ground and unleash three different attack patterns. First it'll try to suck you into itself. This is when you can hurt it. Fire the blade cracker right into its mouth. You'll have to jump up a hair to land these shots. Then it'll send two flashy chunks of electricity at you. Maneuver your way between them, and then it does a massive lunge towards you. This is seemingly impossible to avoid, but you can keep this bastard at bay with a few napalm bombs. You won't drain any of its health, but you'll save a good deal of your own. After getting enough shots in, the machine is destroyed, but Wily surfaces in his little ship, which commences the final form of this boss fight. He'll drop bombs that take out a chunk of the floor, forcing you to jump over it while trying to attack him. Then the screen starts auto-scrolling while Wily sends these bouncing balls down. Slide underneath them, they get some height and move slowly enough. Use the Faro shot to attack Wily, although of course he'll disappear into the background after taking a hit. Keep this going until he's finished, Wily begs for his life, and then of course he escapes. But you're still not done yet, technically. The ship is going to blow up, so shoot your way through these walls until you get to a dead end. You can't advance any further. A weakened Belade shows up, acknowledging his mistakes and deciding to make it up to you by self-destructing to clear the wall in front of you. His sacrifice saves Mega Man's life as he flies out of the ship and hitches a ride with Rush as the Wily Space Fortress blows up. You'll get a rundown of the Robot Masters and a shot of Mega Man staring into the sky, contemplating everything that happened and everything that's still to come, as Wily is still out there. The ending was really cool and bittersweet but it wouldn't be the ending of the series on Game Boy, as there was still one more, Mega Man 5 coming around the horizon. And the formula would get a bit of an unexpected tweak, but we'll save that one for another time. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.